Good morning, folks. Let me send the sun to the horizon here on Stellarium. Update our sky watchers to light. Venus and Mercury are easier to see than Jupiter, even if you're not looking out unabated over the Cali coastline. Still makes for a nice sunset. If you're wanting to look ahead and track the planets, here's what's coming up. We've derived this from Stellarium and NASA's JPL orbital diagram for Ceres 1. Volcano activity calmed for two days, but has now roared back in the western Pacific. Philippines and Vanuatu showing signs of the rumbling. Kudos to the USGS for catching yesterday's North Atlantic quake, unlike the past two days. It was a true North Pole event. Second day of the quake watch caught the first six-pointer in more than a week. We are expecting more in the coming days. You remember the moisture funneling to that low that won't budge atop Europe? Turns out wetness is the least of Norway's problems as a massive wildfire risk is over a huge area. Australia and New Zealand are sharing a line of cloud cover, only going to rain on the far right and left of the screen, however. Still waiting to see the Bay of Bengal coastline not under some sort of warning. Slow low pressure cell rolling along the southern edge of the Aleutian Islands towards the coast. There will be more storms in the U.S. today, but also heat warnings southwest and flash flooding in the Appalachians. Flaring hasn't done much for two days. think that might change today. The sunspot development on the southern hemisphere is tremendous. It's a traditional beta-class spreading region with a northern companion matching the leading positive blue magnetics. It will also be necessary to watch for development on the northern hemisphere. This is yesterday's solar wind. NASA still claims not to have any idea what hit us. Density in orange above the dotted 10 protons line with the yellow speed ramping to 600. Today's solar wind shows the gradual density decrease with the speed headed back up near 800 kilometers per second. This is the coronal hole stream, without question. SOHO monitors the solar wind as well and uses a three-day plot. The coronal hole stream bunches up particles for a density spike, like a shovel bunches snow on the leading edge of the blade, leaving just the speedy particles in the wake. During these coronal holes, the low-density high-speed wake is often less magnetically disruptive, you see plasma penetration going down with less particles overall, and the geomagnetic storm is subsiding. Energetic flux is still present, but we are not at storm levels even with this little spike back up. This is actually closer to normal activity. Then we come to the coronal hole situation. We can now fully see the breadth of these umbral openings. That northern region is truly connected to the transequatorial hole leaving our view, and this bottom left or southeastern coronal hole appears to come darn close to the equator as well. Quake watch continues. Last note, we are way over hundreds of messages asking where you guys can buy Nemesis music. It's the stuff you're hearing in these videos and the stuff featured in How to Watch the Sun. I've been linking his SoundClick page, but the stuff you've heard on this channel is only available on suspiciousobservers.org in the shop. The website overall is still under major construction, but you should see where we're going with most of this. Nemesis was kind enough to let me use his stuff for free, and I think he deserves something for allowing me to avoid a growing number of copyright complaints from the music industry. Thank you, Justin. As always, shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.